I don't remember the question exactly, um, but maybe to just add on to a little more information, there's what uh, we call Samta's triad, where you have um, people who are prone to getting hyperactivity to NSAIDs. So maybe you can try and read more about it if you're interested for Samta's triad. You find that um, for someone who's who, who who's hyperreactive to to aspirin, um, if you if you give them any other NSAID, for example, ibuprofen, diclofenac, you get the same reaction where you have as if they have allergic rhinitis. You have nasal congestion, obstruction, and depending on the degree, you could have as well as an acute, um, acute exacerbation of asthma. So you find that you have to be very, very careful in, in such individuals. Are the five minutes done? Can we start? Doctor. Yes, doctor, we can start. Okay, so good morning once again. Uh, today we're going to do rhinitis. And just, uh, we're going to talk about, we're going to define what rhinitis is, then the types of rhinitis, uh, how it can be classified. Um, then we'll end with management of rhinitis. So from definition, um, this is a group of disorders that is characterized by inflammation and irritation of the mucous membrane of the nose. Um, that's why it is the itis at the end, it's inflammation. So it can be classified into acute and chronic. Um, whereby acute uh, rhinitis, you're considering things that are less than a month. And for acute rhinitis, it could be allergic um, and non-allergic. Uh, for the, for the non-allergic, we have what is infective and non-infective. So you find that there are various divisions of rhinitis which you need to classify. So if we're looking at non-allergic, um, for the infective causes, we could have viral causes or bacterial causes. And for the viral causes, this is where you find a common cold, um, common cold or any other rhinitis that is associated with the viral infections. And for the bacterial, it, in most cases, you find that it occurs secondary to um, a viral infection or a viral and non result all you get is um, usually for the for the viral uh, within five to seven days someone has um, their symptoms have been resolved and then for bacteria what we, we we have what we call whereby someone got a flu or a running nose, and then after five to seven days when they're supposed to be getting better, they're instead worsening or they are getting new symptoms. That is when you could possibly suspect um, a bacterial infection coming in. So for the non-infective causes, we have the vasomotor rhinitis or rhinitis that is due to a chemical irritation. For example, if uh, you put medication in the nose and it irritates the mucosa, you can end up with an inflammation within the nasal cavity. When we talk about the chronic, um, we have still non-allergic and allergic. So for the non-allergic, uh, there's that which is non-specific. Um, it could be chronic hypertrophic rhinitis. This is where you look into someone's nasal cavity and everything is hypertrophied. 
the inferior turbinates are very big, the mucosa is hypertrophied. Yes. Then we have what we call chronic atrophic crinitis. Now, this is different from the, it's almost the opposite in terms of what you may find in the nasal cavity compared to the hypertrophic. Um, when you have chronic atrophic rhinitis, there is a high tendency of having a foul smell coming from the nose. Um, then when you look at the mucosal lining, it's very thin within the nasal cavity. It could have a purulent discharge um, from the nasal cavity as well. Then there's also what we call rhinitis medicamentosa, which is a drug-induced rhinitis. It follows individuals use um, nasal decongestants if they use them for more than five days, um, five days plus, there are higher chances of developing this um, rhinitis where you have, um, instead of decongestion, now you have instead congestion, nasal congestion, and then a discharge and they have, um, they have a feeling of nasal blockage because of the because of the edema within the mucosa so for that which is specific um you could have um chronic rhinitis that is due to particular infections uh and these are rare you could have syphilis tb lupus leprosy yes and so many others uh, you have individuals that have perennial allergic rhinitis. And this, um, this could be allergies to a, a wide range of um, environmental triggers, uh, as to pollen, grass, trees, animals, very many things. So it's, it's, um, it's also imperative that we try and find out what exactly someone is allergic to. Um, so you find that there are also both seasonal um, and all year round um, allergies causing allergic rhinitis. So you find that seasonal things may be changing in, in, uh, in weather or um, seasons where you have like a lot of flowers, that's when you get the pollen and that's when these individual symptoms sort of come up and they're affected. So how do people with rhinitis present? What are the clinical features? Um, this, this can be divided basically into three, whereby stage one is that of invasion. This is within a few hours, um, depending on the cause, if it's allergic or infective. Um, so you have someone having sneezing, a burning sensation within the nasal cavity and nasal pharynx. Um, they could have nasal obstruction, they may have headache and pruritus of the nose. That is in stage one. And that is basically invasion or the initiation of symptoms. Stage two, which is the said stage of secretion, this occurs um, within a few days of the onset of symptoms, where you may have a low grade fever, malaise, arthralgia, nasal obstruction and profuse watery rhinorrhea. Stage three is where we usually expect uh, the symptoms to be, where we expect resolution of symptoms. And this occurs within five to seven days um, in the case of uh, an uncomplicated disease. So um, like we spoke before, if you have symptoms that are worsening after day seven, then you're thinking of um, maybe a secondary bacterial infection to what was initially a viral, or it could have been an allergic thing, but in most cases viral, you have a secondary bacterial infection, and that is what would most likely cause worsening of symptoms. So how do we treat people with rhinitis? Um, those that have acute rhinitis and chronic, how do we manage them? So basically here, we're going to talk about management of um, acute, acute rhinitis, where you have supportive treatment. This could include 
bed rest, give them analgesia to sort out the headache, the myalgia, and then you can give nasal decongestants, which could be um, local or systemic. For the case of local, you're talking in terms of nasal drops or nasal sprays, while systemic is if they're taking medication orally. Um, you could also use a supportive treatment such as um, steam inhalation, which helps with the decongestion in the nose. Uh, is anti and this is usually. Uh, suspecting uh, bacterial superinfection. So that means it's usually for, for, for rhinitis that has gone beyond um, the, seventh, the seventh day. Um, when someone is supposed to have been getting better. So basically the aim of the treatment is to relieve symptoms and um, the medication may include for the nasal decongestion you could have antihistamines or corticosteroid nasal sprays, whereby in the um, antihistamines, you could have bromophenyramine or pseudoephedrine. Uh, you, can have com you can have preparations that have a combination of both, or you could have individual medication. But like, we, like I mentioned before, you have to be careful when you're prescribing the the decongestants because of the risk of ending up with rhinitis medicamentosa. So it's usually preferred that you give it between three to five days and not more than that to avoid this risk. Um, you could also use saline nasal sprays. Uh, they can also act as decongestants by liquefying the mucus. And in this way, it enables it to come out rather than forming crust within the nasal cavity, which would um, cause nasal blockage. Um, then you could have inhalation of medication, for example, intranasal hypertropion. Um, it, could, it can be given in each nostril three to, two to three times a day. Um, this helps with reduction in rhinorrhea. In other words, uh, with reducing the, the running nose so that someone is more comfortable. You could, um, you could also use the intranasal corticosteroids like we spoke about. Um, this also helps with dealing with um, severe congestion. They help in reduction in, nas in the mucosal edema. Uh, in many cases, you may also find that individuals have um, um, inflammation in the conjunctiva as well. So you could give other ophthalmic edges, for example, chromylin uh, ophthalmic solution, and this helps to reduce the itch, itching and redness of the eyes that could be associated with rhinitis. Um, so on top of the nasal decongestants, you could also have other medications that can that include leukotriene modifiers. In this case, we have the likes of Montelukas, um, which is usually an uh, um, an OD dosing for the patient, and this may be given for a more prolonged period of time, and it's usually for cases of chronic um, chronic allergic rhinitis. Yes, that is where you'd get um, better, better symptom relief. Um, the other part of treatment is if someone has allergic rhinitis, it's imperative that we try and find out what they are exactly reacting to. If it is animals, um, if it's pets, then it would be advisable that they stay away from those. Uh, for the case of where someone is reacting to, let's say, dust, uh, dust particles, um, well, uh, it would be advisable to, to, to live in a clean, as clean as possible environment, probably do away with things that keep dust. For example, woolen carpets, blankets, these things that usually have small, small particles coming off them. Um, also, as well, if, if someone is allergic to certain grass or plants, 
then it's advisable that they stay away from them so that they don't irritate the nasal mucosa. And again, as you're managing acute rhinitis, you need to look out for the double sickening sign that we talked about. Someone presents with symptoms, then when they're supposed to be getting better, they instead get worse, where you're suspecting a bacterial super infection so that you can as well as add antibiotics to your treatment. And we would advise that in case of any chronic illnesses, then you can refer to the ENT for assessment and further management because you may find that treatment um, entails more than just medication. You may need to do some surgical procedures as well. So yes, it, it would be in the best interest of the patient to refer them to an ENT. So thank you. Any questions that we can discuss? Uh, Kob Singer has raised her hand. Okay, Doctor, let's... Raised. Kob Singer. I think she should ask a question. Good morning, Doctor. Thank you for the lecture. My question is uh, regarding COVID-19. I have uh, had several people who had COVID-19 and recovered, complain mm. of uh, allergic rhinitis and being... Uh, very sensitive to things they were not initially sensitive to, like mild dust, mild coldness. I, I don't know what 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 would what would be the cause or what would be the comment regarding that. Thank you. Okay. Um. So, in answer to that, uh, you realize that COVID nineteen being a new disease, most of the things we are. Uh, it's like an active research going on, um, trying to find out different things about it, how it affects the, the, the mucosa of the respiratory system, as well as, um, as well as the whole body in general. So having a viral infection and then after that, someone is, is uh, sort of hypersensitive to certain things, it all has to do with the, um, how the virus has, a, has affected the immune, the immune system of the individual. So you have um, sort of um, COVID-19 creating a sort of a hypersensitivity reaction and you have individuals becoming hypersensitive to certain things. But then also uh, you may find that um, in the treatment of COVID-19, we have individuals using different agents. Um, some may be systemic medication, others could be um, could be local treatment where you're putting stuff in the nose. Uh, you have people steaming with a lot of things. Um, it could be it could be actually formulated medication. It 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 may be herbs that they are steaming with. So in all these people are sort of um, exposing their bodies to different would-be allergens. So for, for the case of COVID-19, it's usually, it's really multifactorial. It's not just a virus. It's also to do with the sort of management that people do, the how, how, how they treat, how they, how they control the symptoms. So you, you, you find that it's, it's usually difficult to just pinpoint one thing. So on top of the virus itself affecting the immune system, um, those other agents that are used either to steam or to swallow um, or to put intranasally also have an effect on how the immune system or the mucosa is able, is able to is able to react um, to the different things. So usually it's uh, one needs to evaluate all the other things apart from just the COVID-19. You also need to find out what the person used to treat it. Then you can be able to give a conclusive answer or treatment for that, for those issues. 
Thank you, Doctor. There are some questions in the chat also. Okay. Uh, Shakira asks, what is the management for drug-induced rhinitis? Then, drug-induced rhinitis. The yes, the management. Okay. Then, Jolly asks also, when you mentioned the steam inhalation, is it plain steam or I think, I think it's ingredient? Yes, okay. so steam inhalation is plain steam. And uh, finally, Billy has a question at what investigations are relevant for diagnostic in chronic rhinitis? Okay, so um, management, I'll start with the first one uh, where someone asked about uh, management of drug-induced rhinitis. So like I said earlier, drug-induced rhinitis is usually a result of um, nasal decongestants, uh, which have been used for over a long period of time. So the first step in management is someone to stop, stop using the nasal decongestant. Although when they stop, they still have issues with um, worsening of symptoms. So that usually we stop the nasal decongestant and then try and replace that with um, steroid, steroid nasal spray, and then a combination of other things. But in most cases, you still need to refer these patients for, for actually nasal examination and other, other, other investigations and treatments as well. But for the basic one, we stop the decongestant and in, instead replace it with a steroid spray or nasal drop, but spray works better. For the last, I think I, for the second question, the person who asked about steam inhalation. Yes, it's no. steam. Yes, 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 yes. We in, advise to inhale steam. The third one was the investigations. Um, the investigations really basically depend on how the person has presented. If they have, I mean, if they're coming in with a history of uh, um, a running nose two to three days, um, maybe nasal blockage or congestion, uh, headache, fever, mild fever, you may not need to do any tests. Um, you could treat symptomatically. It's where uh, someone is presenting with what you may think is more severe disease and you also need to rule out other issues. For example, if they have a high grade fever, I mean, then you're considering to rule out other causes that could give you a high grade fever as well. So you could do a malaria, malaria test, um, you could do a complete blood count and you're basically looking at the white cell count. Um, so for the case of um, acute rhinitis, you may not specifically have, um, you may not specifically have individual tests to do. Uh, when we are in an era of COVID-19, of course, anyone came, ca coming in with um, any respiratory tract infection, you have to rule out COVID-19 as well. So you could, as well as do an antigen test for COVID-19. But aside from that, there's really no specific test for that. Um, when it comes to the, um, when it comes to allergic rhinitis, you could also have skin prick tests to test which uh, particular allergen the, the individual is allergic to. Um, but aside from that, there are no specific tests in the case of rhinitis. Any more questions? Uh, there's a thing I asked you for double thickening sign. I think you have. Uh, what about the double thickening sign? We need the elaboration. Okay. So double thickening sign. Um, you you have an individual who comes in with uh, signs and symptoms of a rhinitis. And remember when we are talking about rhinitis, acute rhinitis, you expect that someone should be getting better by day five to day seven. 
but for the case of double sickening sign, these individuals are instead getting worse. So after the after the first week of the infection or presentation, they are instead worsening. The symptoms are worsening. If it is a nasal discharge, probably now it has thickened. They are having um, they are having fevers. Um, they are having worsening nasal congestion or obstruction. Um, they are becoming more sick. So that is what you consider a double sickening sign. That initially someone presented with symptoms, and a time when they were supposed to have been getting better or symptoms resolving, they instead have worsening of symptoms. So that's a double sickening sign. And one has just come in now from Addison. Um, I think it will be the last one. Mm -hmm. What could be the reason for continuing use of the empirical antibiotic uh, prescribers in rhinitis treatment? I don't what know is the which could be the reason. What could be the reason for continued use of empirical antibiotics by prescribers in rhinitis treatment? Okay, so, well, um, like we have talked, talked what the causes of rhinitis are, where you have acute and chronic. And the most common causes of acute rhinitis, we found that it could be infective and non-infective, of which the non-infective is allergic. So for a case of a person, an individual with allergic rhinitis, really anti antibiotics have no role in that treatment if someone has an acute phase. Then for viral, as well as it's, it's also not, um, it's not recommended, it's not standard treatment to give an, an, an antibiotic for someone who has a viral infection. Where we, re, where we recommend viral, I mean, antibiotics if for someone where you're suspecting bacterial infection. So you may have actually individuals who may come in with what you're already suspecting as bacterial, uh, even on first presentation. So you have someone have, having a purulent discharge um, in the nasal cavity, high fevers, because uh, usually for the viral case, it's more of a clear secretion. So um, the reason for someone prescribing antibiotics could be from the examination findings, or second, second, the second reason would be that you're having what we have described as the double sickening sign. So aside from those two cases, there's really no role of antibiotics um, in treating acute rhinitis. I hope you've got me well. Yes, doctor. Thank you. Okay. Any more there questions? Are no more questions. There are no more questions. No hands raised. Okay. Uh, I guess we are going to stop there. Um, next week's lecture, I think Dr. Jamila will communicate uh, and uh, time because I think she's going to be the one doing the, the lecture. Okay, have a good day.